Hey guys, and welcome back to Studio One with me, Gregor. So today I have an exciting episode for you. Based on our video statistics, we know that you're particularly interested in workflow improvement videos. And this is one of them where I want to address five workflow habits that are quite bad or harmful uh, when your goal is to finish your song productions and mixes more quickly. So I want to go through them one by one and maybe you spot yourself in a couple of these. So here we go. The first thing on my list today is not knowing about drag and drop enough or not using the modifier keys in Studio One enough. I see time and time again that users are right clicking here in the track list to add their tracks. Uh, then they specify if they want an audio instrument track and automation and so forth. When you factually can just do this very simply in Studio One, you just go to instruments and you drag in whatever you need. Also, uh, notice that I'm just dragging into the next available song space. I'm not even dragging all the way over to the track list. Same with effects. If I want to, you know, throw a reverb on there, just pick the reverb, drag that onto the track and it's on. There's no reason that you have to go here in the inserts to search your effects. Of course, it can be useful at times when you have like a huge list. But if you just look for your go to favorite effects that you can also tag with a right click here and you just want to add them to a channel, it's as easy as this. Um, same with send effects. If you want to have a send effect, meaning you want to send your instrument uh, channel or your audio channel to another effect for further processing, you don't have to actually create a return or an effects channel as it's called in Studio One first and then add the insert to it. You can simply drag the insert that you want to the send section and as you can see Studio One has directly created the return channel for you. So these kind of things also with modifiers where you can move copy or remove an effect they just make your life so much easier and if you want to learn more about drag and drop i have an entire video dedicated to it it's linked right here the second bad workflow habit that you should avoid or at least reflect on is clicking through the menus and submenus too much. This especially becomes a problem where you're working on a larger display or let's say you're working with a widescreen multi display setup because then there's like a huge distance that your mouse cursor has to travel when you're working let's say from the bottom left here of your arrangement and uh, then you have to go all the way back up here to go to edit and then to maybe nudge and then to the command that you're actually using. For these kind of commands you should really uh, learn the keyboard shortcuts or reassign them to something that makes more sense to you. You can always do that on the Studio One keyboard shortcuts and note that even the keyboard shortcuts can be opened way faster than clicking here in the menu. You simply search for the keyboard shortcuts application hotkey and then enter any key of your choice. So in my case, I'm going to go mm, maybe with this one here. And as you can see, now I'm able to always open up my keyboard shortcuts to directly reassign something. Also things like the undo history, which is so important. I always tell users to really use the undo history more because there you can clearly see what has already happened uh, in terms of editing in this song project. And there's also timestamps that make it really easy to go back. But look how inefficient it is to always go up here to edit and then to history. Simply assign that to a keyboard shortcut that you can use easily and the history is right here to redo or undo any kind of changes that you've done. So just fix these redundancies in your workflow, analyze what kind of commands you're often traveling all the way up here for with your mouse cursor and try to make these a bit more accessible. You can also right click any event in Studio One to get the menus that are directly related to it. So there's many ways that you can avoid going all the way up here, which is a total time waster uh, if you do it too much. Next up on my list of bad workflow habits that you should avoid is being quite inefficient at zooming. This is a big one for me because if you consider how much time you spend every song production to just enlarge a certain group of tracks or regions, events, um, and then go all the way out again to see the entirety of your song project, this could take up a huge portion of your time that you want to spend actually creating something or mixing and mastering. So the worst possible way, in my opinion, to zoom is to just click in the timeline and then drag upward and downward with your mouse. This is just terribly inefficient, in my opinion. Um, also, 
just locating somewhere and then hitting E and W a bunch of times. This can really take out all the fun of making music and uh, just gets very frustrating after a while because all you do is just hammer these two buttons when in fact you could have it so much easier with just two very crucial keyboard shortcuts. The first one being zoom overview and the second one being zoom to selection. So the first one zoom overview simply allows you to see the entirety of your sound project and zoom to selection is as the name suggests uh, selection based so you can just work on the region that you selected hit that keyboard shortcut it's by default shift plus s but i just decided to my mouse right here this is also the beauty of studio one that you can totally customize the keyboard shortcuts to your liking there's nobody that forces you to use the default keyboard shortcuts because who knows what works the best for you, right? Uh, whether you're left-handed or right-handed, you might have completely different preferences here. Um, and Studio One gives you that freedom. So I just love, you know, making my selection here, my event selection, hitting one key for zoom to selection. Once I'm done working with this, I can go to the next one. As soon as I'm done, I need to see the entirety of my project. I hit zoom overview and just Look at the alternative, right? I just hit E a bunch of times. Now I hit Shift plus E to make it vertical. Now I work on this, then I go all the way back. I mean, this is just terrible <laughs> in my opinion. You really don't want to do this. And um, yeah, there's just a bunch of ways that you can do this a whole lot more efficiently. Another favorite of mine is also Shift plus Option on a Mac or Shift plus Alt on Windows that just simply drag a range that you want to work on and then you get that in perfect vertical and horizontal focus. Do that again with a single click and you get back to your previous zoom state. So all of these methods are much better than the ones that might seem a bit more logical at first and you should definitely take some time to explore them. If you want to learn more about how to zoom efficiently in Studio One, which you should because you spend so much time on it, then check out this video right here. It's called Zoom Like a Boss. Hope you enjoy. Very much related to my previous point of bad workflow habits is the next one, which is being inefficient at navigating your session. Very often, and this is also something that I'm guilty of, I see users just clicking up here in this very narrow timeline to relocate their playhead cursor. Um, depending on the size of your display, this could be terribly inefficient potentially and there's a couple of other options that you might want to consider instead so first of all if you have the smart tool active which i would recommend you have which is clicking this little bracket here to get the selection tool in the lower half of a track and the range tool in the upper half that you can use that to relocate your playhead cursor see now i just click here in the upper half of any event and this relocates the cursor on the timeline instead of having to go all the way up here. Also, during playback, I can use this method to set the next upcoming playhead cursor position in orange here. And once I stop and hit play, you could see how the cursor is jumping back here. This would have taken me much more time if I had to go up here in the timeline and click to relocate. There's another option that like I said, I kind of discovered too late myself, hidden here in the track options, just click on the wrench here in the track list and engage locate when clicked in empty space. I love it because this allows you to simply click anywhere here in your arrangement uh, when you don't have a selection because why else would you click there, right? And uh, then you can use this method instead to relocate your playhead cursor. It takes a little bit of getting used to, but once you do, I don't think there's any going back because this is so much better than clicking all the way up here in the timeline, in my opinion. Also, when it comes to selecting the beginning or the end of events, there's two keyboard shortcuts you should get accustomed to. They're called locate selection and locate selection end. I mean, see how easy it is now for me to zoom in, go to the beginning, of this event go to the end of this event with one more click once I'm done I gotta use zoom overview to go back it really makes auditioning certain regions and navigating your song production that much more easy and if you want to learn more about it I have an entire video dedicated to it it's linked right here the fifth and final workflow habit that you should avoid is not using song templates enough, particularly when you're creating the same folders, buses and effects from scratch every time, even though you pretty much use the same naming structure and plugins as your starting points. Let's take a look. 
So instead of creating a new song and then clicking on empty song every time and then, you know, consolidating all of the plugins that we're going to need for the session ahead, we could simply go and create a song template with our favorite settings for each particular genre or job. And then once we have that in place, go to file and save as template. When we do so, then we get the ability to, for example, go to new song and then click on beat making template. If I have like a, you know, very simple beat idea, click OK. And as you can see in this template, I simply added the Impact XT, a drum sampler together with a 16 step pattern for easy note input and I can start creating right away. I know a lot of users are coming over from other DAWs such as FL Studio and they wish that Studio One would also open up with a easy to play step sequencer that's ready to create beats. And this is the perfect way to do it. Just create a song template for it. But song templates are not just useful to beat makers, of course. Also, when you're a mixing or mastering engineer, it's so handy to have all of your bus structures and signal flows ready to go without having to set them up every time. So just open up an empty song, add all of the folders, bus channels and effects that you need. Once you've done that, go to File, Save as Template. And from that point forward, you can always go to Start, new song, select that template that you saved earlier. And this is so useful because now I could, for example, select the Mai Tai as my bass synthesizer, drag that here inside of the bass folder in the track list. And now the Mai Tai is already routed to the bass output. So I don't have to set up my buses anymore. I have all of my send effects ready to be assigned without setting them up in the first place. And this is gonna save you a lot of time going forward. Now, song templates are of course a much bigger topic than what I'm able to cover in this video. If you're interested in them, I have an entire masterclass, three-part masterclass covering just song templates on Personosphere. This is the place where you get everything that we make at Personos Software and everything that we're gonna make in the future. Not just Studio One, also Notion, all of our add-ons, plugins and sound libraries, plus live streams, exclusive live streams of me and Joe every month, plus exclusive video series such as the uh, making templates from scratch masterclasses that I just mentioned. Um, this is just some exclusive additional video content for those of you that are interested. Of course, our YouTube content will also remain as normal and continue to be uploaded. Let me know in the comments what you thought of this video, if you enjoyed it, and perhaps I can do another part in the future as there is certainly a lot more bad workflow habits that I could cover. Thank you for watching.